Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to an overdue episode Because I've started work I guess so I find it difficult to juggle everything again Yeah no one wants to hear your life story mate, just start the video yeah Alright guys now I've been wanting to do this video for quite a while now because Elon Musk just uh, I think about half a week ago or a week ago did his seminar and the whole team did the you know reporting of the findings of Neuralink because I tackled this issue when it first came out I wanted to give you guys an update on this I think it's extremely important because we as an Ummah we tend to firefight only when something becomes public knowledge that's when we start you know panicking I don't want to die I want to live why don't we preempt things we know Neuralink is going to become a thing it's Elon Musk for God's sake, you know what I'm saying? So guys I think it's very important for us before these things become a norm that we start preparing ourselves for it. Yeah we prepare ourselves for anything and everything else, job interviews, exams, why can't we do it for these things because tech has affected our lives quite significantly. If you want to know more about how Neuralink started and the science behind it and artificial intelligence and all that I've, I'll put the links in the description so you can kind of get a background. Yeah stick your tongue back in mate, just tell us now no one's gonna go to the description. But as a whole it's literally implanting wires into your brain so before they had this thing where it was behind your ear and linked to the brain but now they take a, a little bit of your skull out and they implant the neural link and then they just uh, sew up the head. This is sort of what it looks like. This is that little device. All you can see afterwards is that there's a tiny scar and if it's under your hair you can't see it at all. And that's literally what it is and the Neuralink then it's uh, was it electrodes that go into your brain. Will you be able to save and replay memories in the future? Uh, yes I think uh, in the future you'll be able to save and re replay memories. Um, I mean this is obviously sounding increasingly like a Black Mirror episode um, but uh, well I guess they're pretty good at predicting. Over time we could actually give somebody supervision uh, like you could have like uh, ultraviolet or infrared uh, or <laughs> see and radar and actually have uh, superhuman vision. With, with this implant you can actually uh, think, just, just by thinking you can output um, words and you can, you can type and you can control a computer, control a phone. I know Kung Fu, show me. So before when I made the video it was I think in its first phase, now it's being tested on pigs quite successfully. Uh, what I'm excited to show you, um, I've caught like the, the, the three little pigs demo, well I'll walk right over and show you. The, the beeps you're hearing are real-time signals from the neural link. And they're saying in about a year's time human trials will begin. So this is pretty much a reality now. The way any of this tech gets sold to us is by telling us yo it's good for the disabled people, it's good for the people that need it, it's going to help them and this and that and you know what I think that is brilliant. I'm going to be frank if I was disabled of course I would pay a couple of grand for this thing in my head if I could you know walk again or if I could use certain limbs again. I think we want to get the the, the, the price down to a few thousand dollars. So I don't really blame people to be honest and with the rise of artificial intelligence our intelligence compared to artificial intelligence is gonna be a no-brainer. So what Elon Musk is proposing is that we live harmoniously, a symbiotic relationship with artificial intelligence. We benefit it, it benefits us sort of thing. <laughs> He's achieved symbiosis, you seeing this? And to be fair I'm not necessarily against technology yeah, technology I think is a good thing but my dubiousness and my reservedness comes in when we start talking and discussing about the people that are creating this technology. Begin human trials. Oh it's way too soon to even begin to think Dr. about Scott, something. Dr. through like the forefront of a scientific word. breakthrough I need you to hold your nerve. What's their morals? Yeah what's their ethics? What's their goal? What do they want to achieve? And the thing is profit and to be honest any big company nowadays that you see on a global level 
The only way they've been allowed to do that is if they've made certain compromises with the government and the military. And we've had loads of articles in the media, as you guys can see on the screen, which show that these companies have given our data away and have worked with the government and the military for promoting their goals. And what's the goal of the government and the military, especially governments like the US and the UK? It is global hegemony. How long would you stay Look, in Iraq for? Forever? I would stay as long as American interests are served by being in Iraq. I don't know how long that would be. But that's not the question. The question what about Iraqi now, interests? That's not the question. I'm, I am a servant of the American government. So my perspective is going to be what is in America's interests. You asked a question about how long America would stay. <laughs> I asked a question about another country and you said American interests. I'm wondering about yeah. Iraqi interests. So there's three main things that I wanted uh, to get us thinking, to be honest. And the first thing, guys, is to forget or to move on or to let go of a, you know, a broken relationship or the death of a loved one. This is a natural mechanism that Allah's put in us. When somebody dies, eventually we forget, eventually we move on. Same with heartbreak, it may take time, it may take longer time, but eventually, inshallah, you move on. However, when it comes to tech like this, where you're able to download memories. Who are you? The giver. When the elders need guidance, I provide wisdom using memories of the past. Our world was different. There was more. More? Much more. Put them in other machines when that person has passed away and that person is kind of like alive for you. This whole concept of moving on. Be right back. An episode where the dead can almost be resurrected in a way through an archive of all of their previous online activity. At first she doesn't mind, but then over time the things that made Ash who he was as a human was lacking in the synthetic despite it looking identical to him. You know certain people are very attached in relationships and if that person leaves them or goes you know, to replay memories that they have in your head again and again. I mean look at the overthinkers. What we tend to do is we tend to constantly replay things in our head and that's what causes us well, and prevents us from moving on. So this is a big problem to be honest and Elon Musk gave the reference of Black Mirror. I mean this is obviously sounding increasingly like a Black Mirror episode um, but uh, well they, I guess they're pretty good at predicting. If these people start giving references of of these TV series and these movies then that means you see you need to pay attention to them and Black Mirror in Black Mirror there is a scene where the guy is replaying his wife um, I think having an affair. So when Toby Kebbell's character's wife cheats on him, he demands to see it played back to him via her grain. She tries to delete it but is unsuccessful in doing so. It's not even you're thinking about that stuff, you're replaying that stuff and then you're thinking about that stuff. Imagine what it could do to you. Just, just being aware and just training yourself and not relying, it's even stuff like you know pictures. You're having pictures, oh this picture of my daddy, my daddy, oh, bruv. If he's gone, he's gone. Make dua for him, remember him. You know what I'm saying? Do stuff for him. Looking at pictures and regressing like that, that's unhealthy because you're constantly reawakening those dormant memories that's affecting your present. And life is short as it is and we want to make the most of our life and benefit the most people so inshallah we can go to the everlasting life of the hereafter. But if you're constantly regressing in this life, time, valuable time is being wasted. So the second thing I think I touched upon it uh, very briefly it was that corporations in order to make it big yeah, they have to compromise with the government and they have shared our data with them. Despite all of that we got certain tricks here yeah, like you leave your phone at home, you don't use your credit card. I mean to some degree you can go off the grid. Imagine if you got something bloody flipping injected into your head. How on earth are you going to escape that? There's a very, uh, there's another scene I think from Black Mirror. I haven't seen Black Mirror but I've seen these little video essays of Black Mirror. There's a bit where the, the guy's replaying memories or whatever and they've got the chip over here. So the guy you can see in the scene he's digging using a blade and just cutting his skin and taking that that bit out because I mean that's what it is. I mean how, how else are you going to escape? What you're going to go to the hospital and tell them to remove it? Are they going to remove it? Not when it becomes obligatory. 
if there's a way in and they, they can implant memories and they can, you know what I'm saying? And the third thing I wanted to say was decreasing learning. When it comes to phone numbers of people, I don't know about you, I only know like two, two phone numbers. Other than that, I, I don't have to. And when it comes to doing calculations, just pull out my calculator. Yeah. So imagine if now there's so much reliance on technology that even the most vital things that it means to be human becomes mechanized. Imagine if that thing is now taken away from you. How do you feel? I don't know about you guys, but sometimes you know when you don't have Wi-Fi for two days, you really feel it because your whole life is mapped around Wi-Fi. So if our reliance on technology increases, what if technology one day fails us? How are we going to survive? And that's what moves me onto the solutions, yeah? Number one, I think it's important that we increase our discussions and awareness around this because it will help to prepare us and prepare our youth to the upcoming challenges. Number two, I would say acquaint yourself more with nature. Yeah, go out, go fishing, you know, uh, go out to the woods, survival techniques, survival skills, because who knows, you know what I'm saying? Anything can happen in the future and you and I should be in a position where we can survive. That's why if you're, you know, from Asia, um, Africa, Arabia, whatnot, and you're from the village area, yeah, take your family there, get them used to that kind of village lifestyle and survival. Don't get them used to comforts. Because if that comfort's taken away from you, that leaves you open to be manipulated and controlled. And number three, get your youth and get yourselves used to being patient and not always looking for the quick way out. Yeah, fast food, fast this, fast delivery, fast that. Get used to waiting, being patient. And I think that's where Salah comes in. Yeah, going praying in a masjid, praying at home as a family, taking your time, whatever it may be, but. Islam instills patience into us, yeah? Fasting, the whole day remaining hungry. So when stuff like this happens, you don't jump and you're like, yeah, I need this. Uh, no, no, I need this, yeah? It's not a quick fix, you know what I'm saying? You don't need that if you've trained yourself. And lastly, I would say in this day and age, it's, it becomes conspiratorial if any time you challenge the government or the corporate narrative. But that's absolutely okay. You know, bond these people, forget them. If they're saying, oh, your conspiracy, yeah, so what? It's better to be safe than sorry. Yeah, be very careful about when these people give you stuff. Like, where's that money going? Who's funding it? What's happened to similar technologies of the past? Come on, we're not stupid people. The only stupid people are who believe that corporations and governments are looking out for us 100%. I'll leave it there, guys, until next time. Assalamu alaikum.